Welcome to the False Friends of Fatima. This program is about the people who claim, claim to be or pretend to be friends of Fatima but are really false friends. They betray Our Lady just much like Judas betrayed Christ with a kiss. These people show acts of devotion towards the Blessed Virgin Mary but really in their heart they're against what she stands for, what she wants and all the time pretending to be her friend. Our guest today are, is the author of the book False Friends of Fatima and welcome back to the program, uh, Mr. Ferreira. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We've been uh, making our way through this uh, sorry tale of the uh, false friends operation, as I call it, which involves various people in places low and high in the church who profess to believe in the message of Fatima and who emphasize, to the exclusion of all else, prayer and penance as the Fatima message, the way the modernists do, by emphasizing one truth to hide the other truth. And the other truth, of course, is the prophetic content of Fatima, which calls for the consecration of Russia to avoid ultimately the annihilation of nations, and the third secret of Fatima, which in its entirety talks about a crisis in the church that is accompanied by a crisis in the world, which is why we see in this vision published in 2000 a pope being executed along with bishops, priests, laity, uh, outside a, a city in ruins already filled with bodies a vision to, uh, to which, uh, according to the Vatican's version of events, we have no interpretive key from the Virgin herself. So Cardinal Sedano has to tell us what it means, well, I Secretary mean, of State. Uh, and I would, of course, slightly disagree with you and say it's the Vatican. It's really Cardinal Sedano and Cardinal Sedano only and the people who felt that they had to obey him, although they had no obligation to obey him. Really, it's not an official interpretation. As Cardinal Ratzinger himself said, there is no official interpretation. We're not enforcing this interpretation on you. But yes, De facto, in effect, that, that was what the people came away with. That, yeah, that yeah. As a, as a matter of fact, in the last segment, we covered this, uh, really, there's no other word for it, double talk about the interpretation of the secret because Cardinal Ratzinger at the press conference of June 26, 2000, said the church does not impose an interpretation. Yeah. And yet in the printed official commentary, again and again, Cardinal Ratzinger says that uh, we ought to follow the interpretation of Cardinal Sodano. We must affirm with Cardinal Sodano. No, we must not affirm. Well, I, I think uh, in defense of Cardinal Ratzinger there, he might be using the word we and the royal we. We, the meaning I, Cardinal Ratzinger, am bound by the politics of the Vatican to go along with Cardinal Ratzinger, Cardinal Sedano, even though I don't necessarily agree with him, is how I read those lines. But the we could be understood as meaning we all Catholics must go on and, and we must follow Cardinal Sedano. Of course, Cardinal Sedano has, doesn't have any authority in this, as I'm sure you've pointed out and we've pointed out before, but in fact, the impression created in people who, who only got 30 second sound bites is that they, they, this, is the, this is the interpretation. Of it's, all, it's all about impressions. Create the impression that there's an official interpretation when there really isn't one. It's the same thing, like the, create the impression that the mass was forbidden, the old mass was forbidden, when it really wasn't forbidden. And we have uh, Pope Benedict XVI to thank us for at least taking away that false impression. But yes, it's about impressions. That's what the church is being run on impressions and people are going to hell on the basis of these impressions. Exactly. In the, in the last segment where Richard was hosting, we discussed this uh, concept of the June 26, 2000 press conference as a kind of funeral for Fatima. You know, the party line is that uh, these elements, these prophetic elements of Fatima, belong to the past. The consecration, well, that's, that was done in 1984, and the third secret is really basically a series of events in the 20th century. So the third secret, as they would have it, is really the second secret, the second part of the great secret. But then there was another problem with the uh, press conference, which is that they brought out the interpretation of uh, Edouard Danet, S.J. A, 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 a Jesuit who became a very powerful, became, I think, the rector of the Gregorian University at some point. Also, did he, I think he was on that uh, uh, editorial board of writing the, the Dutch Catechism, if I'm not mistaken, which was condemned by the church. The heretical Dutch in, Catechism. In, yes. Yeah, yeah and, and, and he cited in the official, uh, so-called official booklet accompanying the publication of the vision as an eminent scholar in the field of private revelation. Well, in the field of Fatima, of course, and he's the worst scholar there ever was on Fatima in the first place. Why, why is that, though? Well, I mean, Dan is, is what Dan is, um, wrote, I mean, he's certainly an intelligent man, and we, they falsified, during the Second World War, uh, in order for the war effort, they prevailed on, uh, on uh, people to... Uh, talk about tyranny instead of about Russia, because in those days, quote unquote, Russia was our ally. It was our ally only to get the benefit of taking up half of Europe. But during the war effort, they would say, we, we can't say Russia will spread our errors because that will lessen the 
uh, you know, lessen the war effort and the unity of the Allied forces, etc., and so forth. So they, didn't, they couldn't say Germany because it wasn't Germany. So they said something like tyranny. Well, Danes figured out that how they had fudged this message for the basis of the war, they had they had fudged it, and he could say, well, see, they falsified this. Now, so from there, he goes on and makes a big jump. Well, certainly the Fatima scholars said, uh, Jesuit fathers also said, first of all, Father Danis, you can come down and look at the look at the files, look at the actual writings. Interview Sister Lucy yourself. We'll open these files for you and come in. You you have. He says, No, I'm not coming. I don't want to see. Well, as as other scholars have pointed out, a scholar out, who rejects the primary sources. Yes, that's pretty interesting. Well, that kind of scholarship yeah. is that. Well, you see, Danis had his own agenda, just like all these false friends of Fatima have their own agenda. Danis had his own agenda. He didn't like certain parts of the message of Fatima. So he had to say, we can't accept those. So how's he going to do it? Of course, Sister Lucy is a very pious lady. Of course, she would never deliberately deceive anybody. But of course, she fabricated and, and goes on in this. Oh, in he this says way. that. Let me quote yeah. from his opinion. Let us observe also that a good person can be sincere and prove to have good judgment in everyday life while have a propensity for unconscious fabrication in a certain area, or in any case, a tendency to relate old memories of 20 years ago with embellishments and considerable modifications. This is what he said about Sister Lucy. Well, I mean, he's a well, fake, according to him. So we could say the same. Thing. We can say, I think, with much more basis in reality, that Danis is a fake. If, he's, if he claims to be a theologian, claims to be a, a researcher, and he won't go to the primary sources, but are offered to him. And yes, it was acknowledged that for the broad propaganda said done the wrong thing in a particular passage of, of the message of Lady Fatima. That has been long been corrected, but he went on like this for the rest of his life. Sure, and, and, and at the uh, press conference in 2000, taking their cue from Danis, the uh, people who were the pallbearers, as it were, for the message of Fatima, who were lowering Fatima into its grave for the last time, or so they thought, uh, picked up on this idea of the unconscious fabrication. And I'm sorry to say that Cardinal Ratzinger's official commentary says this about the vision that was published. The concluding part of the secret uses images which Lucia may have seen in devotional books and which draw their inspiration from long-standing intuitions of faith, end quote. That's a very nice way of saying she made it up, isn't it? Well, I, th yes, I think, in, in, again, in defense of Cardinal Ratzinger, not just because he became the Pope, but basically Cardinal Ratzinger could have gone to Sister Lucy. He was, after all, the head of the CDF, the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith. But instead, he sent Cardinal Bertoni, who was then Archbishop Bertoni. So Archbishop Bertoni comes back and says, Sister Lucy says, that's the secret, that's the whole secret, there's nothing but the secret, that's it. So Ratzinger, going on the basis that this is what Bertoni testifies as to being Lucy's word, then, then, then he says, well, what about this other text that we're not giving? She says, it's not the real text. So, but the fact is that if he had studied it closely, he'd see, yes, these are my folio, these are my sheets. This is Cardinal Bertoni saying, but... But Ratzinger should have realized that the, the folio is a one sheet of paper folded over like this. That's one single sheet of paper. So, but Sister Lucy to Bertoni, despite his falsification of her testimony, said, these are my sheets. And that's how they quoted it. And so Ratzinger had been paying attention, but by the time the, the attention of the world was on, he had over 200 cameramen and, and press people there for this press conference of June 26, 2000. And so... He but said, what, well, what about this claim, though, that she uh, employed images that she saw in devotional books? Well, I, I guess he's trying to say, well, how can she be saying that the other text is false when she herself wrote it and said this text is true, but it's, on the, it's only on the testimony of Bertoni. Only Bertoni is the only witness to this statement, of, uh, alleged witness, I would say, because we found him in many other places. He's not exactly telling the whole truth. But at that time, in 2000, Cardinal Ratzinger, as we know, became Benedict the 16th, and Cardinal Ratzinger himself has disowned the party line as Pope. Oh, yeah. As I, as I told the viewers in, in uh, the earlier segment, we're going to, uh, as we progress through this discussion of the book, reach the point where Cardinal Ratzinger, now Pope Benedict, says, well, enough of this idea that Fatima belongs to the past. It does not belong solely to the past. The it prophetic about mission. future realities. The prophetic, prophetic, see, you, you know, it's always a good message for Our Lady when she comes at Lourdes or when she comes anywhere else to say, pray the rosary. And of course, we always need to be reminded of that because people don't pray enough. You know, our Lord says pray all the time. Most people don't pray at all every day. But so when our Lady says pray the rosary, pray the rosary every day, certainly we need that reminder. But, but it's not just, that's not, I mean, as, as I say, shall we say spiritual advice, but the prophetic mission, 
That is, for telling the future and telling us of the consequences of the future, if we don't obey, that prophetic mission is not over. But yet the party line is saying, yes, it's over, the consecration is done, the third seek is released. No. As Pope Benedict said, the prophetic mission, he who thinks the prophetic mission of Fatima is concluded, deceives himself. Now you mentioned prayer and penance, and uh, those, those are the two elements that the party line emphasizes to the exclusion of all else. And at this press conference, uh, we see this determined effort to, as you say, end the prophetic mission of Fatima and reduce Fatima to personal conversion, personal prayer, personal penance, which is certainly something everyone should be striving for. But there is a prophetic mission. So what they do is they, they bestow bouquets of friendship on the message of Fatima. They're throwing these bouquets in the direction of Our Lady. Isn't it wonderful that we're called upon to, to pray and do penance? And this is what happened at the, at the press conference where uh, Cardinal Sodano, uh, actually this is somewhat before the press conference, on May 13th, talks about the insistent invitation of Mary Most Holy to penance as the, quote, manifestation of her maternal concern for the fate of the human family in need of conversion and forgiveness. That's a very laudable, pious sentiment, but it conceals the intent to disguise and, and bury and consign to the past everything else about the message of Fatima. Not by saying the message is not believable, but by emphasizing the prayer and penance. And then, and then by quoting uh, Father Danis as being a Fatima expert, when right. anyone, the best Fatima expert to quote would be, of course, Father Alonso. He spent 13 years in the archives. He has 20, 24 volumes still not published to this day in their pristine originality. And he, they were ready in 1975. Why are they burying these 24 volumes of this eminent scholar of, of Fatima, Father Alonso? And yet they quote Danis, who is an obvious fraud when it comes to Fatima. He's a fraud. And they're putting him out as, as eminent scholar in Fatima? I mean, that takes the cake. Or scholar of Fatima has never been to Fatima. Never been to Fatima. Never looked refused, at the archives. Refused to look at them when they were open to, to him. And then, but then at the press conference, Cardinal Sodano uh, in June of uh, 2000, June 26, 2000, uh, through another pious bouquet, he's, he, he says, I'm translating from his Latin phrase, we gather together under your care, Holy Mother of God. Intercede for the Church. Intercede for our Pope, John Paul II. Very pious words. But Our Lady did come to intercede by means of the consecration of Russia. Yeah, she said she didn't come for, to ask us to pray in general for her intercession. She came to Fatima to ask for a specific means of intercession, the consecration of Russia to her Immaculate Heart. Well, in fact, our Lord himself said to Lucy, that if the Pope, I'm, it's my words, I'll give you the exact words, but if the Pope refuses to consecrate Russia in time, he himself will pay the same penalty that the King of France, who had his head chopped off, for not obeying me before. So the words our Lord said are much more elegant, saying, make it known to my ministers, given they follow the example of the King of France in delaying the execution of my command, like him, they will follow him into misfortune. That is, the, the point I'm getting at is that if we really want the Pope to be saved, and we do, that's why I spent 36 years of my life at this work, wh why, why are we doing this? Because we're trying to save the neck of the Pope, literally. Now, it turns out... In, in the and the vision, vision shows the Pope it, being executed. That's, that's right. Instead of being the guillotine like the King of France, he's being shot by a, a band of soldiers with bun, guns and, and arrows. Oh, but, but Father, as Cardinal Sodano assures us, that is John Paul II not being killed. <laughs> and we're supposed to believe this. this is, you know, after all, he is the Secretary of State, who, as I noted in the earlier segment, was also involved in another cover-up, the Father Maciel scandal. Well, he, but also, he says... But it's, there's also some other, uh, I mean, I think business deals that uh, have been reported in the press. As with his nephew. With his nephew. Very so cozy business deals with Vatican contracts and so forth. But this is the Oracle of Fatima. We're, we're supposed uh, to and, and you see, of course, that uh, the, uh, in these Vatican leaks that came out, you know, was one of them is that there was a, a good bishop who was uncovering this, some corruption in the Vatican. And what do they do? They move him out of the Vatican and send him to be the papal nuncio to Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's it. And that's, I think, pretty well admitted now because the, the actual documents have been, uh, have been leaked by, you know, the... Uh, uh, by was, that, this was that the papal nuncio who died last July? No, 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 not him. No, no, he's, oh. repl he's his replacement. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then, you know, further on in this conference, Archbishop Bertone, who will, will soon be the Vatican Secretary of State as Cardinal Bertone, uh, he, th he, he tosses his pious bouquet in the direction of the Fatima message. In this official commentary, he says, The action of God, the Lord of history, and the co-responsibility of man in the drama of his creative freedom 
are what Fatima is all about. And he adds that Our Lady, who appeared at Fatima, recalls these forgotten values. She reminds us that man's future is in God and that we are active and responsible partners in creating that future. Well, it's just, just pious gobbledygook. He's trying to reduce the Fatima message to values, creative freedom, uh, man building his own future, and Our Lady. Well, I mean, a man building his own future is almost is almost naturalism or or humanism. Right. Okay. We're, 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 well, he says we're partners in building the future with God. At least he gives God. Well, his well, well, I'm, that's nice of him. But you know, if you but the fact is, is, when God says, "Do it this way," otherwise you end up annihilation of nations. Otherwise you end up the Pope being killed. Otherwise you end up the bishops and priests and and lay people being killed. You end up with various nations being annihilated. This is the way, and the only way to do it. And they stand up and say, "Oh well, it was a nice, pious idea that we should do right, good things, and and God and cooperate with God." But no, God has told us specifically what we need to do. That's ironic and because He says that we are active and responsible partners with God in creating that future. Well, God has laid down the terms of the partnership. Yes, you consecrate Russia, <laughs> and you will have a future which involves the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And, and, and people are now worried about the. You know the, the the default of the euro, the default of the American dollar. The, the, if if the if the currency goes, people won't be able to buy food at their local store because they won't accept it money. So because the money say, "Let's don't give me this piece of paper." It's like during the second the, at the end of the First World War, the the Germans had these Deutschmarks that were, were completely useless. You, you, a man work in the morning, get paid at noon, give it to his wife so he can go shopping. So that, so that at nighttime, the devaluation of, of the mark was so bad that they had to have twice as much to buy the same loaf of bread. So it had to, literally had to take wheelbarrows of bills to pay for their groceries at the end of the, And this is what the kind of thing is going to happen with the hyperinflation that's about to come down on us. This will be stopped. I, I had economists tell me more than once in our, in our program, this will be stopped only by divine intervention. And the only divine intervention I know that God's willing to do this on is on the consecration of Russia. Well, but uh, according to them, uh, Russia was consecrated with no mention of Russia, which is uh, another aspect of the party well, line. We've gone we, over we, exhaustively. We, 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 yes. But, you know, it, what, what, it, what strikes me, and I mentioned this in the book, uh, is that this, this reduction of Fatima to prayer and penance, as important as those, as those things are, and this reference to values and building the future, the message of Fatima is reduced to a kind of uh, personal empowerment program, self-improvement. You know, well, I think the, the core of the message is this. Our Lady shows them on Ju May, June, July 13th. She opens her hands for the third time. Light comes from the palms of her hands. It falls on the, goes to the ground. The children look to see where this light is pointing to, and they see the fires of hell. And Lucy describes this vision by saying, We saw, as it were, a, a vast sea of fire in which were plunged all blackened and burnt devils and souls of the damned. The, the souls were cast in the air amid loud shrieks of pain and despair. They re we trembled with fear. And we can distinguish the devils because they were cast in the in a form of unknown and weird animals. Lucy, the, the children look up to Our Lady pleadingly, and Our Lady says, "You've seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. To save sinners, God wills to establish the world devotion to my immaculate heart. The core of the message is to save sinners, but by God's plan to establish in the world devotion to the immaculate heart. Because as Saint Alphonsus points out, that the Blessed Virgin Mary has more merits than anybody else, and all the saints." in heaven, on earth, and for the future combined. God wants the people to know the secret of sanctity. The secret is, ask Our Lady to help you. Be devoted to her. Be faithful to her. And she will win for you graces you will never be able to get for yourself. This way, if you do that and you stay in it, you will save your soul. Well, you mentioned this devotion truth, to the Immaculate Heart. This truth has to be established. And the establishment of this truth will be done by the Constitution of Russia to the Immaculate Heart. It's a very specific request. It's a very specific purpose for this request. It's not about being good and being values. It's about turning to the Blessed Virgin because she has more merits than any other saint, any other saint now, and all the saints together today, and all the saints from now to 15,000 years from now will ever have. Wow, but not according to the official uh, but that's the, Vatican that's booklet of June 26, 2000. I'm giving you Catholic theology. I know that, theology. I know that. But this, this, these guys don't know what they're talking about. This is what the official, uh, so-called official commentary says about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. Uh, I, would, I would like, says then Cardinal Ratzinger, finally to mention another key expression of the secret which has justly become famous. My Immaculate Heart will triumph. What does this mean? And the answer he gave at that time was, the heart open to God, purified by contemplation of God, is stronger than guns and weapons of every kind. The fiat of Mary, the word of her heart, has changed the history of the world because it brought the Savior into the world. Because thanks to her, yes, God could become man in our world and remain so for all time. 
So the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, which is uh, it's supposed to be a future event, a glorious event, a reversal of the situation. It, it will world, take place, of course. It was reduced to the Incarnation 2,000 yeah. years ago. And of course, that's... A, that's and it's a, equated a, with people themselves being pure. So, so first of all, certainly the Blessed Virgin Mary, by her fiat, by her saying, I accept your will, O God, by accepting to become the Mother of God, is a great and marvelous thing that she has done, and she has been, she is to be praised for all eternity for that, and she is. But when Our Lady says, he's taking Our Lady's words and saying, in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph, the Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me, Russia will be converted, and a period of peace will be given to the world. All these things, did Our Lady not know how to speak English or speak whatever language she spoke? She said this in the future, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. He's making, my, her Immaculate Heart did triumph. No, it's double talk. Yeah. Uh, and and this, is the, this is the kind of thing uh, they have to resort to uh, in order to suppress and consign to the past the future prophetic mission of Fatima, which, as you noted a few moments ago, Pope Benedict, the former Cardinal Ratzinger, has said is not concluded. He said you, one would de be deceiving himself and, to think and that the prophetic mission like of Cardinal, Fatima is concluded. I, I mean, Cardinal Bertone, I think, was right beside him. He didn't say this, but he could have just as well said, Cardinal Bertone, you are deceiving yourself when you tell the people that the prophetic mission of Fatima is over. Right. And, and he does say that in his book, saying the media gets it wrong. They don't seem to understand it. They don't understand that the thing was, took place in 1981 for the shooting. Of, that's in the past. The media doesn't get it. And he bangs his feet, basically, when he writes this book and says it that way, he insists on that point. Yeah. And in, in his new book, he still insists on that point. He changes a couple of words, but the point is still made, it, that the media gets it wrong, and he will no doubt include me in getting it wrong, but the Pope says, no, you, Cardinal Bertone, you get it wrong. You deceive yourself when you say that. Right. And, 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 but, of course, all of this is in keeping with the idea that now we have to move ahead. Now we have to move ahead with the, uh, with the new, uh, new state of affairs in the Church, and that involves openness to the world, uh, us politic and dialogue. So in the book, I point out that the day after this Vatican press conference on June 26, 2000, who should appear at the Vatican but Mikhail Gorbachev for a big shindig uh, presided over by none other than Cardinal Sedano. And of course, and what are they there for? To celebrate, uh, who, guess who? Cardinal Casaroli. The uh, architect of us politic. So you have Cardinal Casaroli, who's been opposing Fatima, personally going after me for some time. Then you have Cardinal Sedano. Then you have Cardinal Bertoni. All of them have one thing in common. Kill Fatima if you can. And if you can't kill it openly, bury it uh, with uh, all sorts of nice praising, praising words, but at the end of the day, get, get it out of, our, uh, out of people's attention so they don't, they don't ask for the consecration. And, and why were they getting together, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev and these high-ranking Vatican prelates? Well, according to Catholic World News, the purpose of the event was, and I quote, Gorbachev helps to introduce Casaroli memoirs. Yes, uh, exactly. So, so this atheist, he's still an atheist by his yeah. own admission. Uh, and he's still a Leninist by his own admission. Still a Leninist by his I own mean, admission. Even shows up at the Vatican to praise Cardinal Casaroli for Ostpolitik, yeah. the uh, very policy by which the Vatican has ceased its opposition to communist regimes, especially those in Russia and China. And this is a great thing, celebrated in the Vatican the day after they think they have buried the message of Fatima. I mean, it's, it's, uh, the, uh, the contrast is, is obvious. I mean, first of all, and ha w he, would he come had they not buried Fatima? I guess the question I would have, he would never come if they said, no, Fatima, Russia must be con consecrated so he can be converted to the Catholic faith. The Russia must be consecrated because the Blessed Virgin Mary insists upon it. And, and, and you know, so and why would they celebrate Casaroli, who was fighting against Allah's life, if they had said the right thing on the conference the day before? Well, so that's why I think the, the uh, Los Angeles Times said of this whole event, that uh, the Vatican's top theologian gently debunks the cult of Fatima. Well, I mean, even the Los Angeles Times gets it. I mean, how, yeah. you know, not to say the Los Angeles Times shouldn't get it. it. I guess it's obvious to them. Unfortunately, there, because of the false friends of Fatima in the church, a lot of people who have as much intelligence as the Los Angeles Times don't get it because they've been believing these false friends for so long that somehow or other they... And I, I see that, you, again, you have a picture there of Cardinal... Uh, Cardinal uh, uh, Bertoni, or sorry, Cardinal Casaroli and Cardinal uh, Sudano with Evaristo. Is it any wonder, when you figure out these things all going on, that they have their man on the downside, on the ground, uh, carrying and coming back with stories of what Sister Lucy allegedly said? Now that, now that uh, they wouldn't believe him, now they have to have Cardinal Bertoni uh, saying things that Sister Lucy said. And it, it strikes me that there's a tremendous amount of effort being expended on this Operation Bury Fatima because it can't simply be ignored. 
too many popes have attested to its authenticity. It's too much a part of the life of the church. John Paul II professed to see in the message of Fatima uh, the substance of his whole pontificate. So here are these popes, they're constantly bringing up the subject of Fatima, and here are these uh, canny Vatican uh, bureaucrats operating under the Secretary of State trying to do what they can to manage the Fatima problem, which is a big public relations problem for them. So this is endless, you will, you will see this as we go through the book, endless campaign to uh, bury the message, but it keeps, as, as uh, Mark Fellow says, bobbing to the surface like a cork under the water. Yeah. Every time they push it down, it bobs up to the top again. Well, and I if we go through the rest of this, uh, this study, we're going to see how that happens. Well, and I, I ultimately, how the Pope himself uh, ends, ends up validating your entire position. Well, I, I'm reminded of the words of our Lord when, when the Pharisees told him to stop the children from saying, Hosanna, the son of David. Our Lord said to them, if I stopped them from speaking, the very stones would cry out and, 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 and acknowledge that I'm the son of David. So it's the same thing. This message comes from God. The message comes from Our Lady. And Our Lady, the truth is going to come out one way or the other. They can't suppress it, but they're going to kill a lot of people along the way as long as people believe these liars, basically. We're running out of time on this program. We need to remember that Fatima is most important for our time. It's a message the Blessed Virgin came to give you today to save your life, your freedom, and above all, your soul. You need to recognize the true messengers of Fatima from the false ones. You need to know their techniques so you won't be taken in by them. Remember to pray the rosary every day. Ask Our Lady to show you the truth. God bless you. Mm -hmm.